I have this, can you guys see that? I have this crazy obsession about formalizing abstract concepts. And so I want to encourage this tonight, the idea that geeks and dorks are intersected by nerds. You can be a chic geek, but not a chic nerd. And why I bring this up is this, this desire of mine to formalize things. When I was a senior in college, I had a professor who asked me to um, define the difference between science and engineering. And so this is what I did. I was like, okay, science creates knowledge, engineering creates tools. But the important thing is we can't live without each other. Science takes knowledge and tools to create more knowledge. Engineering takes, you know, engineering and knowledge to create more technology. Um, as Feynman said, and you know, physics we could say, science as well. And again, the idea that science is this pure thing, right? And engineering is kind of the practical application of that. So I had a struggle with this, though, when I moved to Seattle, because I met people who called themselves a designer. And I looked at their output and I was like, oh, art, design, right? Makes things pretty, right, designers? <laughs> no, design is much more than just making things pretty. And actually, I started thinking, maybe design is to art as engineering is to science. It's kind of this like concrete application of more of a pure concept. And so taking this and like my desire to make pretty diagrams, I ended up with this beautiful visualization. Three, two. <laughs> and so you can, you can really think about these things in terms of a spectrum, right? Kind of the migration from the objective to the subjective, from engineering to design, science to art, and the realm of pure to functional. And actually, I felt pretty good about this. I kind of could resolve this internal struggle I had around these four things and what they, what they mean. But I realized there was something that really bothered me. And I, like, I wanted a third dimension that kind of came from science to design. Because really, I think of science as a slightly different thing um, and separate from these three outputs. It's really about the type of thing you're producing. And I think, actually, when I saw Sam Harris's book, it made me think about this. Because he talked about this notion of the moral landscape and how science can help us navigate this landscape. And that bothered me. Um, now, first, the important idea is this notion of a landscape, meaning there might be many ways to be moral, many peaks you know, on the terrain. And you can say the same thing about ways to eat, or um, what defines health, or what a good business plan is. Many peaks on the terrain. And I think this is distinct from science. Because you think about science, you need the ability to measure something, to find, like, is this true or not? And to do that, it's not so much peaks in the landscape, it's more like a mountain. Like, is it true or not? Um, and so you can say, like, take a design, for instance, and say, well, there's 15 ways to slice this, so maybe we can measure one angle, one aspect of it, but is there one answer, one number that says, is this a good design or not? And so really, when you think about comparing science to the other three, it's really the notion that in this kind of space of things, there might be one answer if it's science. But in design space, engineering space, art space, there are many possible paths that are correct. And it's important to internalize that. Science really is unique. So I think what we need to think about is these are all creative acts. And if you ever talk to a scientist about the work they do, they'd be very creative about finding the answers they're pursuing. But in the end, it seems self-evident. How could it be anything but what it is? But when, if you're an, an artist, an engineer, a designer, really it's about creating something novel. So I think we should think about science as the canvas we play on, right? It's the constraints that we have in the physical world. Knowing the speed of light is a great thing because we stop trying to make our processors faster by trying to make the electrons move faster. It just isn't possible. Compare this to art, though, and really it's this notion of the purely subjective in its pure sense. Now, is this obscenity or is this art? It depends who you ask. You know, I know it when I see it is the famous quote, right? And so for us to try to pin down with some objective measure, like how to define the goodness or badness of a piece of art, is really difficult. Engineering, on the other hand, is absolutely measurable. So there might be 15 ways or 15,000 ways, 15 million ways to make a plane, but in the end, is it safe? How fast does it go? How efficient is it? You can actually measure it with objective means. And so I think this really distinguishes the difference between art and engineering. And design is this wonderful combination of these two. Like, not only does the car have to be fast, not only does it have to be safe, but does it, in some abstract sense, remind us of the old car? So the guy who buys a 2011 Mustang still thinks he's buying a Mustang, right? The other important thing to ponder is this idea that just because our output, the difference between our output and what goes in. Now, the Hubble Space Telescope is a great scientific instrument, but to launch it, to build it, was a huge engineering task. Mostly engineering went into it. I think that's important to realize. But more importantly is, when something went wrong, the biggest problem with Hubble was not that the mirror was broken, it was that it was, was not designed for a human being in zero gravity to fix it. So this user interface problem in the Hubble was actually its biggest issue, what took three days to fix the thing. And so, when you look at the spectrum of things, um, or if you Google you know, design and art, you end up with this guy a lot, Da Vinci. And what we see is that it's a spectrum. He did a lot of science, he did a lot of art, he did a lot of brilliant technical design. And so I think what we can all do is strive to kind of appreciate the spectrum of things. And so whether you're doing fundamental physics, or designing compilers, or writing operating systems, or just building beautiful user experiences, we need to realize that we're working together on this design of what we call existence, and it's still a work in progress.
Thank you very much. 